Saturday marks the 81st time the Texas A&M Aggies and Rice Owls have faced off on the gridiron. It's actually the 40th matchup that provided this series with its signature moment. Heading into the 1955 game, the Owls had won 10 straight over the Aggies. And after they took a late, comfortable lead, it looked like an 11th consecutive victory at the expense of the maroon and white was imminent. We didn't know it at the time, but there was Aggie history in the making. And what a better way to talk about what unfolded on West U in 1955 than over a little Texas barbecue. Here are John David Crow, Lloyd Taylor, and Jimmy Wright. Yeah, that's, that's the highlight. We did it so much out of character or, or out of our game. In Houston, on November 12th of 1955, the fight in Texas Aggies looked beat. Ninth-ranked A&M trailed Rice 12 to nothing as the closing minutes of the fourth quarter faded away. Paul Bear Bryant had gambled and started a halfback, Don Watson, at quarterback. The plan backfired and the Aggies stalled. With defeat out in front of his team, Bryant turned to signal caller Jimmy Wright in hopes of a reversal of fortune. And he said, Jimmy, come here. And I went up there and he says, damn. He said, get out there and straighten that damn mess out out there. <laughs> in all seriousness, the move triggered an explosion that ripples through Aggieland still today. Now for the biggest comeback of the season. A lot of early leavers missed this finale. Four and a half minutes to go. Number 45 is the Aggies' Lloyd Taylor. He's loose on a 58-yard run. When we broke the huddle right, said, Taylor, if you'll run, you'll score. <laughs> anyway, they forced me out of bounds on the three-yard line, and I carried and scored. And then we kicked an onside kick. That turned the tide of the game. Watch the Aggies pick up the kickoff on the Rice 43-yard line. One play after the recovery, the Aggies went for it all and the lead. And then here's why they sing about Wright and Taylor in Aggieland. We worked all week on splitting Bobby Joe Conrad out, and he, he was the only one that ran that play. I hadn't even run it in practice. <laughs> and I said, okay, where, where'd I go, Wright? He said, just straight down the sideline. He said, and when you cross the goal line, I'll have the ball to you. Right to pass and Taylor to catch, and that's the story the Aggies will tell to their children. It's AM 14, Rice 12. Moments later, Jack Party intercepted a Rice pass and returned it to the Owl 8. The sprint to the finish was unfolding at a rapid fire pace. But with Party interrupting the action here, it's a chance to pause and remember a great Aggie we lost earlier this year. Getting to know him as, as, a, as a friend and, a, and a, just a genuinely good guy and would do anything in the world for you. I'll never forget, he had both shoulders separated and uh, he never complained, never said anything. Jack was a, he's, he's a great individual. When he returned the kickoff and he got caught by Joe Clements from Texas and he returned it about 84 yards or something. I think he went out on about the 16 or somewhere. He knew he could, he, if he could just run a little faster, you know, he'd have made it. He takes that ball and he slams it down on there because he's a competitor. And besides being like John Davis said, one of the finest guys you'll ever meet. I loved him and loved him until, until, he, until he left us a few, few months ago. Party's interception may have iced the game, but the Aggies were good for another six. Things didn't work out for Don Watson at quarterback on this day, but he found the end zone at his usual position. A&M scored 20 points at a speed today's offense would be envious of to overtake the Owls. I think we only ran five offensive plays. It scored more touchdowns than we played. We did probably any other game of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it happened so fast, esteemed Houston sports writer Mickey Herskowitz missed it. He said, well, I left at four minutes, get on the elevator to go down. And we were losing 12 to nothing. And he said, when he got off the elevator, he saw Aggies running everywhere, screaming and hollering. Said, we won. He said, what do you mean we won? You almost had to see it to believe it. And this trio will never forget it. Without those two guys, I don't know where they were the rest of the time. It has been a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> you know, everybody has a lucky time in their life, and I guess that was mine. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those kind of games that you'll always remember always remember the plays and all the teammates. It's, it's a great win. Teams just didn't score three touchdowns in under three minutes in 1955. That was more the 
three yards in a cloud of dust era, but Texas A&M pulled off one of the biggest comebacks this school has ever seen on that day. We're back in a moment to close out the opening edition of the Texas A&M Football Show, presented by AT&T.